Hello YouTube, it's Tony. So today I'll show you a 1 to 99 or 120 hunter guide for 2019. Now this is after the hunter modernization aka nerf that occurred 4 months ago. Do note that these XP rates may not be fully accurate. Here are the XP multipliers. You could get bonus XP from the heist minigame although it isn't worth it however. Now there are more to list but these ones are the most common XP multipliers in the game. Moving on, we have the useful items. First of all, we have the Enhanced Yaktui Stick, and that requires 72 Hunter, and no, you cannot boost this requirement to get this. You obtain this by catching 1000 Charm Sprites. Wielding this will give you 2% more Hunter XP, which is nerfed from 5%. After that, we have the Hunter Outfit. You can obtain this from the Ark, and that will cost you 10,000 Charms and 10 Taiji 2. Wearing the entire set will give you 6% more Hunter XP. I do have a complete guide on the arc as well as how to get chimes fast, which I will leave the link in the description. The next thing we have is the Volcanic Trapper outfit. This is a rare drop from Treasure Hunter, but nowadays it is obtainable in game. It requires 70 Hunter to get what are called Volcanic Trapper fragments, which is obtained while you're training Hunter. It also requires 20 Invention and 80 Hunter in order to craft them to pieces. However, that's not all because you will need 100 Hunter Marks to purchase the blueprint. You can get Hunter Marks by hunting anything in Anachronia. The Desert, Jungle, and Trapper all have the same effects. You'll get 5% more Hunter success as well as retaining the regular Hunter outfit if you own that. Combining all three sets, you'll form what is called the Volcanic Trapper outfit. By wearing the Volcanic Trapper outfit, there are so many nice boosts to Hunter. After that, we have the Hunter Urns. In order to add a mud rune towards this, each urn has a crafting level requirement. However, this can be assisted so you don't have to worry about this. By hunting creatures, it will fill the urns. Depending on the urn type, it will cap at a certain tier of the creatures. When the urn is full, it will automatically teleport. However, you have to enable this in your gameplay settings. When it's teleported, it will grant you XP depending on the tier, and no, it does not stack with bonus XP. Essentially, it's giving you a 20% XP boost overall. Now we also have the Urn Enhancer, and it will boost the Teleporting Urn's XP by 25%. After that, we have the Summoning Familiars. The best familiar for Hunter would be the Arctic Bear, and that will give you 7 Invisible Hunter levels. Moving on, we have the Sliski's Endgame Rewards. First, the Combined Catalyst Fragment will instantly reset failed box traps for you. Then we have the Ring of Whispers which will give you another 3 Invisible Hunter levels, and finally the Necklace of Shadows will make it so that it will stop draining the summoning points after a familiar is summoned. Wearing all 3 of them will give you the Manifested Knowledge set effect. The Extreme Hunter Potion. It requires 80 Herblore to make. This potion is untradeable although the ingredients are actually tradable. Similar to Overloads when you drink this potion, the boost will last 6 minutes constantly. At 82 plus Hunter, it will boost 17 Hunter levels. Yeah, so when you're level 70 Hunter, this item becomes a lot more useful. Then we have the Tracker Aura, and that will increase the Hunter success by a certain percentage. It is from the Solomon store, so it's gonna cost you loyalty points. Finally, we have Grace of the Elves. So there are a couple of effects from this, but the most notable effect for Hunter is that there's a chance to spawn a Saren Spirit, which you can click this and it will give you a random drop from the rare drop table. So essentially that means you're getting extra loot. I have talked about the useful items, so let's get into the training methods. From level 1 to 9, you'll do the Natural Historian Quiz. That is located in the Varrock Basement, which I've marked right on this mini-map. It will take around 5 to 10 minutes to do. Then from level 9 to 19, you'll feed Ogre Roots to Rabbits. That is located in the Vine Sweeper minigame, so you just teleport from any tool leprechaun in RuneScape. You'll pretty much run around the field and feed the rabbits. Now because there are only 8 rabbits per world, you're gonna have to hop worlds. I believe it should take you around 20 minutes to get from level 9 to 19. That means you'll need to buy 116 Ogre Roots. From level 19 to 53, or you can stop at 67, you'll do the Tropical Wagtails. This is located in the Feldip Hunter area, which I've marked right on this mini-map. It's north of the Uglog Lodestone, but the best spot for this is just west of the house where you see a hill. You're gonna set the bird snares right around the hill. You will start off by setting two bird snares. 
Then at level 30, you can set 3 bird snares. And finally at level 60, 4 bird snares. Thanks to the hunter nerf, you're gonna have to spend a lot more time doing this. You could try banking the bird meats because they have some value, but otherwise just drop them from your action bar since there isn't any bank nearby. I would ideally try to spread my traps out a little bit because sometimes there will be a few minutes where birds don't even show up. Here are the XP rates with the hunter urns. By setting 2 traps you can get 40 to 50k XP per hour, then with 3 traps 65k to 70k XP per hour, and finally with 4 traps up to 85k XP per hour. From 53 to 67 or you can stop at 77, you'll do chinchampas or skill champas. The location does vary, but what I'm going to show you here are the Great Chinchampas. This is north of the Eagle Peaks Lodestone, and the best spot is just north of the fences. At this stage, you can set 3 box traps. Then at level 60 or higher, you can set 4 box traps. There aren't many spawns here as they're somewhat spread out, so once again, spread out your traps. Now try to avoid attacking them because if you attack them, they're going to explode. If you were to compare the XP rates of each Chinchampa or Skillchampa, they're actually pretty identical. One of the biggest hits towards the Hunter nerf is that no, you do not get extra XP from extra catches for Skillchampas. At level 53, you can get 60k XP per hour, then at level 60 or higher, 70k XP per hour. From 67 to 77, you'll do the Black Salamanders. It is located in the Boneyard Hunter area, which is the level 19 to 20 wilderness. You're just gonna keep going east from the wilderness lodestone. In order to set a net trap on a young tree, you need to bring one rope and one small fishing net each. At this level, you can set four net traps at once. I know PKers aren't really common here, but don't bring anything that you are not willing to lose. You should also bring a quick teleport just in case a PKer shows up. Most importantly, try not to bring too many hunter urns. Now since this area is spread out, you're gonna have to search around these young trees. Also, it is pretty hard to see this area because the color is a little bit dark. If you were to bank these black salamanders, you could make a decent profit off of these, but otherwise just right click and release them all. Here are the XP rates. You can get from as low as 110k XP per hour, all the way to 186k XP per hour. From 72 to 77, you'll do the charm sprites, and no, you cannot boost for this method once again. The location is near the world gate south of the Eagle Peaks lodestone. You're gonna start by buying a yak twee stick as well as a sprite lure from this NPC. What you're gonna do is click the shaking bush to tag this, then click the sprite lure. Finally, click the charm sprites to catch this. Now this is a very click intensive method as a whole. In my opinion, I think this is well worth doing especially because of the comp cape requirement and it only takes you 2 to 2.5 hours. As for the XP rate, I think it's pretty decent because you'll get around 100 to 135k. Using an upgraded Yaktui stick, the charm rates are even better. From 77 onwards, you'll do Grenwals. Now I highly recommend you complete the Elf City Medium tasks because you avoid needing to bait them. The best location nowadays would be Anachronia. Unfortunately, it's no longer worth it to crystallize Grenwalls, as they have been nerfed so that it only gives you 10% more XP or 20% with the Lightform Prayer. So you're gonna follow my box trap layout and pretty much spread your traps. Having the Volcanic Trapper outfit's gonna help here just because of how spread out they are, as well as giving you extra hunter success. Now once in a while, a big dinosaur will stun you for a couple seconds, so don't worry about this as you can just use freedom to clear this. These Grenwalls are pretty slow when it comes to triggering the traps, so there might be a few minutes where they won't trigger them. It also helps that you use Extreme Hunter Potion, especially if you're under level 80, just because of the hunter success rates. At level 77, you can get around 200k hunter XP per hour, and then at the 90s, you will get around 300k XP per hour, with 7 million GP per hour worth of Grenwall spikes. Yeah, this is an extremely overpowered. From level 75 onwards, you can do the big game hunter skilling boss. Now it also requires 55 slayer. Once again, this is located in Anachronia. I do recommend having a high woodcutting level as well as bladed dive and double surge for mobility. And finally, the base camp upgrades. I mean, this method is still doable with 7500 itself, but the kills are definitely going to be slower. 
To be fair, this is somewhat of a confusing mini game, but I find that this is pretty fun. These XP rates aren't good for its level, as well as being really click intensive, but you do get other nice supplies for Iron Man, as well as offering you decent profit per hour for main accounts, and of course, the big game hunter totems. In case you don't know already, I do have a full guide for this, which I'll leave the link in the description. The XP rates written on that guide are slightly less because I forgot to factor in the fact that you do get extra XP from building these traps. From level 88 onwards, you'll do Charming Moths. Although you can boost it from 77 Hunter with Extreme Hunter Potion, it also requires 83 Agility. It is located in the level 30 Wilderness East Coast. Now this method's nearly full AFK after the Hunter rework because you can catch these butterflies automatically. Also, it is pretty decent for charms. This spot has become a hotspot for peak carriers, so you better watch out for them. You can get 650k Hunter XP per hour, as well as 100k Agility XP per hour passively. I find that this is the best method to do B499, especially because you cannot do the one tick method. I have a full guide for this, which I'll leave the link in the description. From level 96 onwards, you'll do the Ornate Turtles. You could boost it from level 81 with the Extreme Hunter Potions. Since it's located in the Uncharted Isles of the Ark, it will require what are called supplies. Once again, I do have a guide on the basics of the Ark as well as how to get chimes, which I will leave the link in the description. Ideally, flag a daily island with at least two colonies. As for strategy, try to set the turtle traps near the hunter icon on the minimap. Nowadays, your character will automatically step underneath the trap after you collect it, so you're gonna have to walk one space after you collect, or else wait a few seconds before you set a new trap. The XP per hour nowadays is around 450k, at the given rate of 540 catches per hour. Unfortunately, this does not factor in the time you spend hopping islands. From level 97 onwards, you'll do Crystal Skill Champas, which can be boosted from as low as 82 with the Extreme Hunter Potion. This is located north of the Tyrus camp, which requires the Regicide quest to access. You'll set the traps around the Hunter icon on the minimap. Now the catches are relatively fast, but you do not get extra XP for extra catches. The XP per hour you can get for this is 250k, as well as giving you 1.4 million GP per hour. Now the XP per hour isn't great, but I mean you do get a small amount of profit from doing that. And finally, the last regular method I'll talk about are the Black Warlocks. It requires 95 Hunter, but you can boost it from 81 with the Extreme Hunter Potion, although it also requires 90 Agility. It is located in the south part of Anachronia, near the Dark Animica Rocks. The fastest way to get there would be by using the Slayer Cape Teleport to the new Slayer Master, and then going a little bit north. I mean, otherwise you're gonna have to walk around the Agility course. Just like Charming Mods, you can catch these barehanded. While I forgot to bring this, but the Ring of Metamorphosis will help. This method's very good for AFK Hunter Marks, and no, you do not have to worry about PKs this time. You'll get 200k XP per hour, as well as offering you 10 to 20 Hunter Marks per hour. In addition to this, you will get a small amount of Agility XP. So, let's get into the 99 plus section. The Hunter Cape. By activating this cape, it will allow you to do the one tick hunter method. Unfortunately, after the Hunter update, this is the only way to do the one tick hunter method. So Tony, how exactly does the one tick hunter method work? Well, what you're gonna do is place both the cape and the trap on the action bar, and then quickly press both keys. Now every time you check your traps, step underneath them so you can set the trap fast afterwards. The way it works is that you're supposed to set the traps faster than usual. Anytime a trap is unsuccessfully triggered, don't left click a trap to reset that. Instead, what you want to do is dismantle a trap and then set a new trap from your inventory. How much faster is it with or without one taking? Well, that depends on the method, so just see the next slide for the XP rates. Here are the 99 plus methods you can do. I've listed you the XP rates with and without the one tick method. I do have footages of me doing the one tick method, which I will leave the link in the description. Some methods are better than others for various reasons, so yeah, just choose whichever one is right for you. Now that I've talked about the regular training methods, let's get into the other methods. First, we have the Big Chinchampa, and that is a daily D&D. It will spawn every hour on the 30th minute. In order to get there, you have to climb up the ladder, which is located south of the Tree Gnome Stronghold Agility Course. 
Then afterwards, you have to right click and enter the middle portal that's colored yellow, and finally climb down the hole. Now once you're down the hole, you go to any corner and pick a flower then equip this. You'll get points by catching butterflies or checking the shaking branches, so yeah, just keep running around in a circle basically. When you catch 15 butterflies, you'll now empty the jar to the nest. Just repeat the same process until the timer runs out or when you get 1.5k points. Now you can only play this minigame twice per day. I would recommend this until you're level 75 hunter. The next D&D we have are Gobi Bands. This D&D is similar to Warp Bands, but this time it's a safe PvP activity. You'll get up to 48.5k XP for free every day, and it only takes you 3 minutes. Yeah, so it is well worth it, okay? There's an FC that tracks which world has which two skills, and it's called Mini Games. I have a full guide for this which I'll leave the link in the description. After that we have Protein Traps, and those are obtained from Treasure Hunter. The best place to use them at would be the Carrion Jadinkos in the north part of Anachronia, right beside the Venomous Dinosaurs. Unfortunately, it's really hard to navigate so I cannot explain in words, but I did draw out the approximate path to get there. It requires 88 Hunter, but you can actually boost it from as low as 77 with the Extreme Hunter Potion. But Tony, wouldn't Herblore Habitat be better than that because it's easier to get to and there's a lower requirement? The answer is no because the spawn rates here are very nice, as well as not needing a Jadinko combination for this. As you can see right here, this method's really AFK because you're going to use the auto deploy option. Once in a while, your character will automatically stop deploying. Unfortunately, hunter urns do not work here. I got almost 900k XP per hour, in which case I use 1050 protein traps. I do have a full 1 hour footage of this, which I'll leave the link in the description. The hunter dummies. Once again, these are obtained from treasure hunter. Anyway, so you deploy them in AFK. Each dummy has 5 lives. I understand that you can use other players dummies, but you will only get 5% of the regular XP. You'll use 35 full dummies in an hour, which in turn will give you a whopping, wait for this, 1.3 million XP per hour at level 99. Given how hard it is to train hunter nowadays, this method's extremely overpowered. And finally, the last other training method we have are the hunter brawling gloves. You can get this from the rare drop table or by doing Wilderness Slayer. Each glove will come with 336 charges. The best place to use them nowadays would be at Big Game Hunter, but you only equip this when you skin a tier 3 dinosaur kill. Otherwise, you better unequip this or else you're gonna waste charges. The second best place to use them at would be the Charming Mods, and that is located in the level 30 wilderness. To wrap this video up, Hunter has gotten worse after the update. Unfortunately, there aren't many good AFK options, especially at the low and mid levels. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already, because I'll do more 1-99 and 120 guides in the future.